This aged giant's land of the cave bear, two and a half million years ago, life on planet Earth faced the dawn of a new era, the Ice Age. Now we go back into time because out of the permafrost, from deep inside caves and fossil deserts, and astonishing remains of giant animals are emerging. How amazing to be one of the first people to see these ancient creatures. This ancient creature, the Ice Age, was the last time such creatures could walk the Earth. Thus, Eden with mammoths taller than any elephant cats with seven inch teeth, and some of the strangest beasts that ever existed, fascinated with what remains of ancient animals and tell us about them, a the world they lived in. Using new scientific advances, we can now reveal how they lived and why they died out. Come with me back to the Ice Age, a world ruled by giants. 880,000 years ago, our planet began to cool, heralding the beginning of the nearest Earth Age. Arctic ice sheets expanded. The impact on everything alive was huge, and sometimes, in some in ways you wouldn't expect, the largest ice sheet covered at half of North America. The south of the ice, the land became richer than ever. Last time I saw, I had a Gophomian mammoth, the Galopoth, the, the giant ground stuff and the saber-toothed cut or forest here. But in the rest of the northern hemisphere, the story is very different. The lions had their own castle giants, magnificent animals, and now faced a huge battle for survival. Here, the impact of the Ice Age was especially severe. What did find out what chilled uh, a Europe to the core? It took it to survive the harshest conditions of the Ice Age. A first candle was of a truly ferocious beast. Another creature has left such vivid clues for his life and his struggle survival. I hear the Roman pro- Roman promise. Promise of Transylvania. This is the traditional home of Crown Dracula. I'm not looking for vampires. Here in the Asturian Mountains, a remarkable cave has kept a dark secret in the Ice Age for tens of thousands of years. Its cave was discovered by a group of miners, rock blasting for my bone. This is what they found inside. Once their bones could be assumed, would have been assumed to be those from unicorns to dragons. The scientists identified them as Unirus Beel Aceteris, the cave bear, greatest heavyweight of all Ice Age bears. Cave bears have been f- la- were larger than grizzlies, and as to their flat grinding teeth reveals they were vegetarian, yet mainly berries and alpine plants. It remains to a story about from about round 40,000 years ago. Average global temperatures were about 6 degrees lower than today. Marcus Rubu an air-sage mammal expert spent years piecing together the cave bear's story. His bone, uh, bones everywhere. Are these cave bear? Are these cave bone, bear, cave bear bones? Yes, they belong to cave bears. How big are these bones, Maximus? Really, yeah, where? And now, uh, what are they doing in here? Where are they come? Where they are coming to her to den to hibernate? It's quite a different as well. Quite different as well, isn't it? I mean, we come in what was like minus 12 outside. This must be plus 10. We are mining hybrid in here. But these bones can only mean one thing. Many hominid animals never woke up. reason for that was ever happening outside the cave autumn. Young mother searches food to see winter through. She and her cub must fatten up. This year, high energy berries she needs are scarcer than ever. The wind approaches a bear's head for the hibernation cave. So she must choose a perfect spot. Won't be safe. Forty thousand years later, we're following in their footsteps. Really? It's just there isn't enough water flowing down the side of the cave then. So many bears pass this way over thousands of years. They rub the rocks smooth. It's like looking at ancient steps which have been worn down by people walking up and down them. This is amazing. There isn't one there isn't just one of the two cave bears. This must have been generations of them, definitely, yeah. Massive beasts pushing their way into the kids' cave, polishing the walls as they go. It's hard to believe they came so far in and through such tight passageways. Something very unusual about this place. Thanks to constant conditions, the mud on the walls is just as soft as it was all those thousands of years ago, about 250 metres in, etched into the mud, something truly extraordinary. They are just as amazing. Look at that, scratch marks. Maximus and team could only find one explanation. The impressions are made by cave bears during the Ice Age. I can't believe that all these traces are still there from 10,000 years ago. 
A bone is the one thing. It's amazing to have those fossils preserved here. But to have traces of life, and so they, so do they do. Another hundred meters, it's a, there's a big drop. Now, Maximus, Marcus, now tell me that it's strong, it, this is strong, it's absolutely worth it. There's a bottom, of, what's in the bottom of this long drop? I'm going to try and negotiate. It's very exciting indeed. Okay, yeah. All goods and meats covered in them. This is just a standing, yeah. Yeah, I want to know what what, what came of them. The trail broke us, took us deeper in. Oh my goodness, it's, look, it's like looking at a tomb. Mains of the key beds are left. All their scratches and the clay above me scrambling to get out. They never made it. Just imagine dying here in the dark, alone, in desperation, gradually starving to death. It's not a wise way to go. Makes me wonder why these bears even took to this risk, going inside and to hibernate. Doesn't seem they were always they were always alone. Deep in another tunnel, there are traces of another ice age trade giant. Panas Panastar Spelindia, a live lion. Look at that, the munificence specifically looked quite similar. And I can imagine it was covered in a bit of mud. You might have thought it could be a bear cave bear. But you look at these teeth. Wow, look at that. It's me and huge canines and meat eating molars. It's, it's wonderful. Cave lions are 20% larger than African lions. Chemical tests on their bones reveals they preferred eating large herbivores, but under pressure would hunt just about anything. So, what was the cave lion doing in his cave? Was he, he making a cadet here and send weight to bears? So, he's hunting the big bears? Well, that's risk. Well, what a risk a cave bear to take coming to a cave like this, knowing that. I thought there might be cubs there. I would have been make it easier. But the mothers are likely to be there as well. And they're big animals with big teeth. Shortly to make sound. And Marcus is convinced the lion fought a cave. A very ca- bear in his very cave. Lion bones are found close to bear's nest. There's some intriguing marks of lion's skull. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this has been gnawed. I know it's been. Would have been a formal predator. But I found it astonishing. It would have even faced up to Cape Bear. A cave lion tracks up it tracks its favourite prey reindeer. With me every year there are a few of them. High in the mountains driven by desperation. A cat approaches a cave, he smells a meal. To a darkness lion must use its senses to smell and hear and do let the killer let the killer blow. Snarling, roaring, it's harrowing story of animals. Forced to desperate measures. As I say it's changed their world to chosen thing though. Is this at that at this time the nearest ice sheet was still far to the north? Could it really have been a long range impact? Well, there's a place that shows us how the ice age took plate took hold. It's incredible to see this. Never seen anything like this before. Now this is just a fragment of remnant of the old, old often once gigantium ice sheet that just dominated the northern hemisphere, stretching right down into North American and Europe. There's this Greenland's ice sheet. Like icy fingers radiating into walls from the ice sheet, glaciers stretch out to the sea. You as of ice can move over it's uh, over thirty meters, five meters a day. When a sheet and I uh, the most they meet the ocean, this is what happens. Icebergs are born. There's nothing compared with what happened during the ice age. As the Arctic Arctic ice sheet grew. Glaciers spewed with many great fertilizer icebergs. Many sides of large islands they floated into the Arctic Atlantic. When one large iceberg melts, it releases millions of tons of water with thousands of icebergs melt. They disrupt our ocean currents. A change of climate right across the world. I mean, 50,000, 30,000 years ago, Europe was rattled by three massive deep freezes. Hedrick Revents, which is intense, savage, impulses of cold produced by Hedrick Revents. When hold Armada's icebergs, we used to kick start the ice age. The temperatures continued to drop. The great polar ice sheet advanced so ever not southward. Its influence began to alter the habitats of Europe. The okay, bears were here in Transylvania. The sudden brutal cold pushed it the tough. The woodland glades glaze provided the rich vegetation. The okay, bears depended on were disappearing in their own Arctic conditions, being placed by some much hardier Scrubs and grasses, useless to a giant, gallery hungry bear. Every autumn saw more bears starting their hibernation underweight. By 30,000 years ago, this species teetered on the edge of the moor, and more bears died in hibernation. Within a few thousand years, 
The European cave bear was extinct. Yellow's woodland gave way to more open landscape, including forest species and extreme stress. But this harsh new world wasn't a total disaster. Presented a new great opportunity with one feisty giant, a two-ton eating fighting machine. Animal must have might have thought would have been more at home in the tropics. It remains crop up in the most unlikely of places under the North Sea lies a vast ice age plain. Today is a rich fishing pot ground. And trawlers' nets are dredge a lot more than just cod or had it. Sometimes a main of woolly rhinoceroses. Hundreds of them rhino remains have been discovered between Birmingham and Vatterstock. They just recently new specimens successfully preserved so they've been preserved by the power of us, discovered Siberia. I'm going to Yakutsk, the coldest city on earth to see it. As winter temperatures creep below mine about minus above minus forty. It take, thanks to this unforgiven climate you can see exactly what I realised a rhino was like. From the old female woolly rhino found in a mine just outside the city. Can't believe she died 40,000 years ago. It's a credibly rare and precious thing. It was a complete carcass of woolly rhino. Most complete that's ever been found. Why, when you touch it, you expect the skin to give a little under the fingers. Of course it doesn't. It's still frozen. It feels like a cold, hard stone. This is an animal which is perfectly adapted to warm, living on the steepy of Siberia. She's covered in his woolly, furry coat to keep her warm. A little bit of, of it still clinging on her, with her back feet. A woolly rhino, but the same size as a modern rhino, African rhino, and a double layer coat of wool shielded it from the brutal cold. Long hairs formed an outer protective layer, shorter hairs formed a dowdy, firmer layer underneath. The ears and tail were smaller African rhinos to prevent heat loss, temperatures as low as minus 60. A whole body shape and massive stocky body with short legs is a good, very good way of keeping cold and climate climates. Warm in cold climates. They must strike a feature the horn about twice the size of African rhinos. Just the thing for setting, setting full territorial, territorial disputes. Two males competing over the same territory. It will tend to end in a showdown. A woolly rhinoceros with a pressy creature. It is very present. It reveals something quite odd. About the old ice age in Europe and Siberia. Through its large size body, one only needed to spend virtually all day eating. It simply couldn't resist a place where its food is always being covered in snow. This is a great paradox of the ice age. The freezing waste of Europe and Siberia, one thing was thin on ice with snow. Temperatures are colder, but still as much, so much as planets water locked up in ice. It meant the climate was also drier. So under the clear blue skies, there's plenty of sun in summer, for grass to grow in the winter, hardly any snow to cover up. Usually they, they, they were, one is one of the largest eating machines to benefit from these cold, dry plains. As one giant, that whose life, ice age, would be complete, winter woolly mammoths made this yearly, made a yearly migration across Siberia. Over a hundred years, the Siberian permafrost has yielded some truly amazing specimens. This is the most captivating of all. This one is the most famous mammoth finds of many recent years. She's called Liburu. She's a little baby mammoth, probably just a month old. We found in 2007. She's amazingly well preserved, so she has her skin and soft tissues. We have the contents of her gut. Specimens of this one revealed the inside of a woolly mammoth. Is even more impressive than outside. Like the rhino, the woolly mammoth, the double layer coat of all to shield it from brutal cold. Also, under the skin, of course, and it freed with blood. Inside the red cell cells, hello, grooming. The oxygen carrying compound of blood can for each efficiently sub zero con- conditions. In other words, mammoths actually fur the cold. But the real mystery to both woolly mammoths and rhinos isn't how they survive the pulling cold. Uh, what these gi- giants found to eat. Animals that need up 200 kilos of food a day, with nothing like a cigari, or the jungle's bone in where elephants live today. It would be freezing ice age environment provided enough food for these mighty giants. 3,000 years ago, mammoths range of a vast area. Thanks to low, lower sea levels, Britain was joined to Europe, Siberia to Uranaska, North America's great ice sheet, where great mammoths could have walked on a broken belt. All the way from Britain to Canadian Yukon. Today is a far flung corner of the mammoth world. Yukon 
last habitat is uniquely preserved. Mammoth remains first identified in Yukon where they were discovered by miners, the Co- Condite Roll Rush. The century on and things are a bit more organized. Tragedy now is my own official paleontologist. What we have here is a woolly mammoth roller. It's a typical iconic ice age fossil found in the Yukon, Alaska, Siberia. All over the north, the guiding surface of the top of the woolly mammoth tooth is a very indicative with larger razor, something that eats a lot of grass. But sometimes there's a paleontological record. You have to look beneath that. You have to look at some of the smaller guys that live there too. They actually provide us with some more information in terms of the whole ecosystem, how it functioned, how it was structured during the Ice Age. I look at these valleys. There is here is this mammoth playground. There is there's a huge, huge shagali of large animal mammals during the Ice Ages. Today in the gulch of gold, the ground still frozen since Ice Age is broken up with high pressure hoses, giving Grant a brief chance to hunt for clues left behind by this very special Ice Age character. Well, we're always looking for those bales of grass heaps. They look like grass heaps, but it's just, it is, it, but it's just gassy material. When we see the outcrop, we know we're dealing with squirrelness. There are traces of Ice Age animal. Rather than it's still with us today, Atlantic, Arctic ground squirrels, enduring rodents, once lived in, under the feet of mammoths. Today, they still fry the Yukon alongside a couple of Ice Age spiders. The reason the ground squirrel is so useful to Grant is that he's one of the nature's collectors. He has some summon the races on for male squirrel, ground squirrel. If he catches that down, so down the habitat, hibernate. He must eat enough to double his body weight, collect plants on breading, and make a cliche of nuts, ready for when he wakes up in spring. When winter finally arrives, he goes on the ground to hibernate. The most dangerous time of year, there's no guarantee to survive the winter. Back in the Ice Age, both death and the hibernation was common. Thousands of years later, the hermit froze in the remains. The ground squirrels, along with that, the, the, what was collected, Ice Age time capsule. I think we have dead squirrel in its nest. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh wow, look at that. Wow. We've got ourselves a whole Atlantic ground squirrel skeleton in this. This guy died during the Ice Age and never made it through men- med- hibernation. Very interesting. But in a few feet of space, there's free squirrel nests, literally called the ground squirrels, here during the Ice Age. This is a great one. There's enough really nice seed preserved in there. The plant remains in the ground squirrel's nest. Here you are the secret of woolly mammoth success. I've seen a number of plant species we typically find in Atlantic ground squirrel's nests. A number of buttercups and poppy seeds. Looks like wild, wild grass, some blue grass, and those. All types of plant species will really love cold settings, so places like mountain tops, ridge tops, grassland and environments, not just grass, but a whole range of species, creating a robust and productive, productive habitat, plenty of mammoths and rhinos to feast on. Not a good place today to be a mammoth in the north, because it's essentially nothing to eat, but we go back to where there was grass everywhere and flow flowers, very few trees and very few shrubs, feeding offensive and grazing mammoths, if you can imagine that sort of grassland environment, spread all the way from North Canada, here in Yukon, to the, all the way down to England. This last grassland is known as the Mammoth Steppe. A source of food for mammoths, the holy, holy mammoths, wrapped around the half of the world. Autumn on American, uh, Egyptian, uh, European steppe. Mammoths mingle with a large herd of bison, laying away to winter, winter grazing grounds in France. Caroline waits to pick off. A weak and old, but there's one predator there's a real threat to mammoth and makes look lion look at the pussycat. This ice age creature was a giant of its kind, it preyed on giants. Science has proved it more than any ice age creature species, right down to traumatic makeup. Supremely successful hunters and scavengers, intelligent, high geographic range, one of the largest apes. Our very own cousins, the Fidadels. The Fidadels, long, ho heads, pronounced brow ridges, and stocky frames, and better adapted to cold, and would really survive several age stages. But for neither Fidadels, this idea was to prove more challenging than they had gone before. In one site, at the edge of Europe, 
is completely in evidence that in the struggle to survive, Nidifos turned to the biggest beast of the steepies, his cave. The Kuti of the St. Bernard on Jersey, Mount Pope of the University College of London, wants to show me we looked like 30,000 years ago. Getting in perspective here, no friend of ours had been approaching it from the bay. It would have been dry land. You can see it absolutely dominates this bay. It would dominate the skyline out there, the hunting grounds, or plains around this site. So on this site, there's cliffs, which have been always been a feature of the Jersey coast for the past several hundred thousand years. It would just be rising up in a relatively flat, low and open landscape. As evacuations spinning in the century have revealed the generation upon generation of feeders, this cage now has got to be one of the most famous of feeder sites anywhere in the British Isles. But what type of animal bones have been found here? Well, bones preserved poorly at the site, but it's dominated by amounts of mammoth and rhino bone, mosses bones. We know that isn't a natural combination and bone because the bones or clear marks of stone tools. We know exactly what those tools were. It's a hand axe, a biface, a large semantical tool, but they would really come onto their own, where they would come in an incredible meat knife, which is a rotary hand grip, which is used to pick up the tissue, picks up meat, and it slices through. It may have been very, very, very portable, very useful pottery knife, further to itself. Makes sense, especially when we think about early ancestors who are competed with most sorts of all sorts of vulnerable predators. They had to cut carcasses up. They had to take pieces of meat away quickly. A tool as simple as this sustains any human, any kind of human range. Technology extends to abilities or basic anatomy. Before the new fellows could butcher mammoth, they would kill to kill them. So how did they hunt these five-ton mammoths? Early theory: the chase mammoths over the edge of the cliff here. But Matt thinks it's unlikely strategy. Loud trumping, we've got another theory. Based on the shape of the landscape here, during the general cooperation, the sea levels are far lower than today. Cave is ahead of a narrow ground, a dead end. It bring a little herd of mammoth in the dead iron valley. You use to stay a good chance of getting able to isolate individuals, isolate a group of them, and kill them all through a different way. Using technology to turn falls of a bus, fed seat, kill them at close quarters. A woman mother searching for water follows a path of gorge. They had no idea he walked straight into a trap. Despite their proudness as hunters, their fear dwells with species with threat of extinction. It is north as great ice sheets were growing back and growing, locking up some of some water. Land began to dry out across Eurasia. Deserts formed. The dust was scooped up, strong winds and blown westward. In a cave of Jersey, above the Roman phony remains, obviously discovered that the thin layer of this dust. Further around 35 million years ago, the Nefolios gave was suffocated by it. Shortly after the Nefolios dis- disappeared from Jersey, the species now clung on to a few refuges for the men around the Mediterranean, as the ice sheet near the greatest extent. There was only one mighty galactic pulse. There was one mighty galactic pulse sending miles of icebergs into the North Atlantic. As they emerged, the ocean vot- vot- cooled. This time, the temp- continent was plunged into the coldest period. This ice age, our average global temperatures plunged to 12 degrees below that of today. By now, new fiddles have become yet another ice age species. The ghost think the climate is likely to blame. As only very likely, there's something to do with the arrival of some new, new agreements. Our own ancestors, Homo sapiens, began colonizing Europe about 25,000 years before the peak last ice age. Our ancestors didn't have physical adaptations, and the fiddles didn't have. It won't prove an Ice Age survivors. So how did Ice Age survive when the first died out? During the Ice Age, modern humans spread right across Europe, Asia, right to the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. But as a last Malaysia maximum approach, and conditions were so they sought refuge in the south. Even here, though the climate is harsh, they found a way of surviving. Using the natural resources available to them, eat out a living, a climbing climate of the central Europe and southern Siberia. Evidence of the survival skills have been found here. The town of Zidarek, on the banks of the River in Russia, a medieval fortress now stands on this spot. Observations show humans are making their home here 20,000 years ago. There are clues of how they survived the Ice Age. The ancient hunter-gatherers used whatever material they could lay their hands on. There's one material in particular 
has been found in great abundance across the swathes of Europe and Asia at the time. This is the remains of woolly mammoths, a button and the tusks. Tiki labor hits the project, leads the project. Fees are scarce during the Ice Age. Mammoth bones and teeth and tusks of the tended fuel, 20,000 artifacts, 200,000 artifacts have already been found here. Some of them suggest an ingredient not known, not known to no fellows. A really beautiful example of something that would have been used probably for piercing or drilling. Some kind of material, probably one quite hard material. We can tell the lovely slender shape and fact that this wear, were all wear, was all wear around the top. They shaped it very carefully to begin. And then we have additional wear on the top of that. Been used to drill, it, drill through something that could, should, could be ivory. You think it's not for ivory? Think it's for ivory working? Yes, it could be ivory, yes. As I have discovered some ingenious uses for mammoth remains, tusks were delivered in the ground to form a frame. So you need to believe the traces of organic material to just a hide is stretched over the top of former roof. These subterranean pit dwellings, some of the very first houses ever built. Our ancestors were using and the giants giants are say giants have survived. The technology used these these people by these people surviving extreme conditions. During the peak of that ice age, it's a fantastic example of the ingenuity and adaptability of our species. It doesn't just a month, but just it doesn't just building shelters make stone tools. Anthropologist here at Zanderak uncovered some truly beautiful dynamic, animatic objects. Many of them speak to us of the close relationship ancestors had with rice age giants, as well they shared a bison carved from mammoth ivory. A prevent presents an animal that must have been key to the survival of people lived there during the ice age. It makes of time and effort to carve something. It takes time and effort to carve something this beautiful. And I'd love to know what it meant to the person who made it he, to his and his, his or her community. Was it an object of great ritual significance? Object was perhaps revered. Was it something used to teach children about the animals? They used to would hunt and when they grew up. There are some things that we never know. But how wonderful to have these intimate collection of these stone age hunters. For our ancestors, whose animals are sources of food, clothing and building materials. They may not have worshipped them. Images of lions, bison, woolly rhino. Woolly mammoths of cave bears were also are from Quebec Cave in southern France. Animals which are long known species battled against Ice Age right across the northern hemisphere, Israel and North America. Temperatures plummeted to the lowest they've been for thousands of years. Change the climate environment put large and number of species under enormous pressure, driving them back to the brink of extinction. But many species have survived for the peak of the last age. I think. Well, really surprising, it wasn't It wasn't those years of malaria of intense cold they finished them off. It happened next. It happened next to the world began to warm up. The great ice sheets of the south started to melt. 